Ryan is uh, from the School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences. And uh, the title of uh, Ryan's thesis is Peripheral Physiological Mechanisms of Extreme Cardiovascular Stress Reactivity. Or, as he's calling his talk today, a Goldilocks effect. Too much, too little, or just right? How many people in the room have ever been stressed out? What was the situation? A job interview? A speech in front of a crowd? A first date, perhaps? What did it feel like? Were your legs shaking? Were you sweating? Did you feel like your heart was pounding outside your chest? Well, I'm not going to call all of you liars, but I can guarantee that for some of you, it was all in your head. And in fact, your heart rate probably didn't go up at all. It can be easily seen that when put in a stressful situation, most people, at least on the surface, they get quite nervous and, well, stressed out. But if you start to peel back the layers and look at the biological response, that is their heart rate and their blood pressure, it tells a little bit of a different story. For example, if a saber-toothed tiger were to walk through these doors right now, I think it's a safe bet to say we would all be quite stressed out. But despite us all being equally stressed out psychologically, biologically, our reactions would be quite different. For some of us, our heart rate and blood pressure would be going through the roof, whereas others of us, despite being stressed out, would be like this caveman here, and our heart rate and blood pressure would remain quite constant. What's more interesting, though, is the manner in which we respond to this stress can predispose us to a host of diseases. For example, individuals like this caveman up here are at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and even premature death. Opposite to that, individuals whose blood pressure and heart rate stay constant under stress are often characterized by depression, obesity, and addictive behaviors. So what we have is a bit of a Goldilocks effect. Small reaction too cold, large reaction too hot, something in the middle seems about right. But it begs the question, why do people react so differently? Well, this is what my PhD is looking at. In the lab, I recreate stressful situations by having participants give speeches in front of small crowds or do mental maths under time pressure while I measure their heart rate, their blood pressure, and other cardiovascular variables in order to gain a better insight into what's going on physiologically in response to the stress. <laughs> I've seen it all. I've had participants yelling and screaming at me because they're so stressed, yet their heart rate and blood pressure remain quite constant. I've also had participants seemingly unfazed by the stress, yet their heart rate and blood pressure, it tells a bit of a different story. It's my hope that if the physiological reasons for such diverse cardiovascular reactions to stress can be understood, then the diseases that are associated with them can be more understood as well, and that this stress reactivity can be used as a marker, a screening tool, if you will, to identify individuals who might be predisposed to diseases at an early age, so that a medical or lifestyle intervention could be put into place. Let's face it, we're all stressed out at some point, but given the prevalence and the health implications of stress, wouldn't you want to know what diseases you might be predisposed to as a result of the way that you react to your next stressful situation? Thank you.